Kirby is no stranger to longtime Nintendo fans, but I'd be lying if I said Kirby's first outing, Kirby's Dream Land, didn't have a few surprises up its sleeves. Some good, others not so good. Let's start with the good. Look at this game. Even though Kirby himself isn't very detailed, the backgrounds are very nice to look at. You go from woods to castles, oceans, and skies, it's an exciting game to look at. In terms of sound, considering Green Greens and King DDD's music is still used to this day, you know it's a stellar soundtrack. In terms of gameplay, this is where the surprises started. Kirby is known for his ability to suck in enemies and steal their abilities. It's pretty much his number one defining feature next to his infamous color, which, by the way, happened to be white during this point in the character's western life. In Kirby's Dream Land for Game Boy, you cannot steal enemies' abilities. Your best bet for fighting back is to suck in an enemy and then spit them out as a projectile. I was not expecting this the first time that I played this one because pretty much ever since the second entry in the series onward, Kirby has practically always had his copy ability. And due to the lack of this, you can't really approach this game as you would any other Kirby game. It's a very simple platformer. Thanks to Kirby's ability to fly indefinitely, it's pretty straightforward. It's a really cute game with a lot of character. The level design is still solid enough that, playing through this one, I didn't miss the copy ability. The bosses are also a lot of fun to fight, and in my personal opinion, boss fights are kinda more interesting without copy abilities. They force you to wait for that special opportunity to suck in a star and to launch it back. In later titles, you can usually just spam whatever item you're holding. I like this game and I think it's great, but it isn't without criticism. The first is that the game is very short and very easy. The game being easy isn't that big a problem because for starters, the game was made for just that, starters. But unfortunately, standing at only 4 levels, there's just not that much meat on the bone. A seasoned player will breeze through this game in about 30 minutes or so. Fortunately, the game does include an expert mode which is accessed via a code which is given to you after you've beaten the game once. And boy does it ramp up the difficulty. I wouldn't say it really improves the game. This mode feels like an added bonus and not really the main event, so a lot of deaths feel cheap throughout my playthrough. Overall, it's a fun game, just a short one. It's only a couple dollars on the eShop and I would recommend it if you're looking for something to spend an afternoon on. I would definitely not pay any more than that as there are much better Kirby games available on the market with much more bang for your buck. If you're curious to see where the pink marshmallows roots came from, give Kirby's Dreamland a spin.